Let's learn about DynamoDB. DynamoDB is a serverless database that can be used either as a key store value, so it just means like, you know, simple um, keys and then some attribute that you store, or a document database. So think of like a JSON document with a whole bunch of name value pairs, and the whole thing can be referenced by one single key value. So either a key value store or a document database is how you could use it. And it, by def definition, it is a serverless database, which means that someone else takes care of its scalability and security, and you only need to worry about the data usage and how that data supports your application. Despite the fact that it's managed by somebody else, it can handle trillions of database interactions per day if you need to scale that high. So let's imagine a use case for this database service. Imagine that you're an energy company and you have oil wells all over the country and you want to store the number of barrels that are being pumped at each location each day. Let's create a table that would work for that. So we click create table and here up at the top for table details we have three fields that we can fill out. The first one we will call oil wells, straightforward enough, and here are the keys that we can use for this table. Now, DynamoDB DB is relatively schemaless, meaning that you don't create an overall set of columns that you're going to be using in your table up front, except for the unique identifier of each thing that you're going to put into it. Your unique identifier or your key can either be a single attribute primary key or a multi-attribute primary key. In this particular instance, we only need one uh, attribute to define our primary key. It's also called a partition key, and this relates to how DynamoDB stores your data on the back end for fast retrieval, and things with similar keys are going to be grouped together. So let's go ahead and call our primary key slash partition key ID, and we will make this, uh, it doesn't really matter if I do um, string or number, but notice that there's not a whole ton of field types like with other databases that you might be familiar with. There's just a few different kinds. And um, I'm just going to go with string here because it's not going to matter. And that's really all I need. I'm going to go ahead and click create in just a second, but I'm going to note that as it relates to that capacity to handle trillions of interactions per day, um, part of that is facilitated by how much capacity you're provisioning for this database service. And if I go to customize settings, I could specify instead that I want on demand, meaning I'm only going to get billed for what I'm using, or I can go with provisioned and the default when you're using this wizard is um, five read capacity units and five write capacity units. And the description of what that equates to is outside the scope of this video, but we'll just go with that for, uh, for now. You'd be fine with one technically, uh, at least for these demo purposes. So I click create table and it spins for a few moments and it's already active. Okay, so let me click on this oil wells and there's nothing in it yet. Let's uh, go ahead and click explore table items. Granted, there's nothing there. So let's go ahead to this button and click create item. Now, the only thing that's required is this unique identifier every time. Let's imagine then that our the identifier for one of our oil wells will be OW for oil well number 525. Now, anything else I want to put here is optional. And to put the additional fields on there, I do add new attribute and I can select from this drop down. And really it's just again string, number, boolean and then uh, and binary and then things that are combinations of those. Um, so I want to give this thing a date stamp, and so I don't have a date field, so I'll click number, and I'll say date for when the reading has taken place, and we'll just say like 2025, and we'll do January 2nd. So we'll just do whole day dates for how many barrels were pumped in a day, and then we'll add in another f attribute here of type number, and we'll say barrels, meaning how many barrels were pumped, 
and on average you get about 20 barrels pumped per day for any given rig at least what's that that's what the internet tells me so I'll say that this one got 19 which is a little bit lower than um, what a producer would like and so from there I will click create item so notice I've got two number attributes and one string attribute note that we call these things attributes and not columns or fields that's the vocabulary we use when we're working with DynamoDB we click create item also notice that records are called items and not rows um, an item can again be just a single name uh, key value pair or it could be a whole document this, this can be thought of as a JSON document with lots of things in it let's create another entry create item Okay, oil well, number 525 again. Let's add in a, another date stamp. So date, and we'll say 2025, January 12th this time. And let's go and add this again. And we'll type in barrels. And this time we'll say they're a little bit better than average and they'll do 21 and maybe I'll add in a note here so I'm gonna go ahead and add a string and I'll say note and say fixed a broken part now notice that the first item that I created had one two three fields or attributes technically and this one has four attributes you can vary the attributes across every single item that you create in your table. It doesn't matter. Um, you just need to have this in there. And actually, I said OIL 525. Um, we can't do that because this needs to be a unique identifier. So this field you, or this attribute you needs to be unique. So I'm creating a different entry. And I click Create Item and now I have two items in here now let's explore the process of querying things so there's two different search options up here the query option is the better one and you access this functionality typically through software you would also create items typically through software as well using your favorite programming code you create typically JSON documents and then upload them up to this service rather than typing them into the form. Um, similarly, when you read information for your application, for your web application, for example, uh, you'll be writing some software code that on the back end either does a query operation or a scan operation. The query operation is the one that's optimized. And you see that it's going to be searching on the partition key. And, and this is the best and the fastest and the cheapest way um, for you to be performing your queries. Um, so in this case, let's just say I'm going to do OW number 526. So I do a search and I am returning just that single record. If I had a whole bunch of records with composite keys, so it had um, the partition key and then this also the secondary thing called a sort key, uh, I could potentially enter in a single partition key uh, like this 526 and have a whole bunch of records um, that would be returned because the sort key which uh, one way of using the sort key is to is to have it be a date field and then every combination is unique um, so if I had a composite key and I just brought it back all of the records that matched 526 and then I would get a record of everything for that and all of the dates associated with it um, I could also further filter the results by using this. Now this filters area is for searching on things that um, have other attributes. So not the primary key but any other attribute in the documents that are there. So imagine um, I wanted to do where barrels is um, let's see less than or equal to 15 because that would be a really bad um, result so I click run and of course nothing matches that um, searching on the attributes of your item that are not part of the partition key is less efficient 
but in this case it's okay because we've initially done a search based on the partition key. Let me contrast this with scan. Now notice that scan doesn't really enforce anything. If I click run it's going to return everything in my table and then I come here under filters and you're expected to do searches on these other things. It's called scan because it's a full table scan and if you have billions of items in there searching through every single item to match certain attributes and their values is, an ex is, a, is a lengthy thing to do. It takes a lot of th time time-wise. It's also going to cost you more money. Notice this little thing here that says read capacity units consumed. Uh, the more complicated your query, uh, the more data you have, etc., uh, th and, and the less optimized it is by not using the partition key, the more read units it's going to use up and that's going to reduce the performance of your database. And um, the more capacity you're using uh, with multiple users, the more capacity you're going to have to pay for to make this service even work. So whenever possible you want to use query. Alright, so that's a quick little introduction to how to create a table and how to create some entries and then how to query those uh, items while they're in there.